Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about the Telemechanic FTX 517. The Telemechanic was manufactured by Schneider Electric in 1997 and it's basically a portable computer that was used to program different PLCs. If you're wondering what's a PLC, basically a PLC is a programmable logic controller and it's used in various industrial automation processes. I bought this computer from a local Facebook sales group because I thought it was cool, not because of any historical reason. Now let's have a quick overview of this computer. First thing, let's release the keyboard. Somehow. Ok, as you can see the computer looks pretty nice, even though I didn't have the chance to clean it yet. On this side we have the power switch and the power connector. There are also some LEDs that show you the status of the hard drive and if the power is on and I guess if the computer is on sleep mode. Uh, there's also a floppy drive on 1.44 megabyte to be precise and also if you can see there's a secret door. If you open this little door here you can see a control module used for programming PLCs. Let's take this out for a moment. It states Schneider Automation. It seems it's some kind of interface that the computer used to connect with some Schneider or other automation products. On the other side we have a VGA port, a RS-485, a printer port, a serial port, a PS2 port and a couple of extension ports, probably ISA or PCI. Now let's check out what's underneath this machine. I think this machine has been designed for harsh environment as it has a dust filter underneath the cooling system. Now let's see if this thing really works. And the screen flickered, yay! To be honest, I never powered this machine before this video. It seems we have an error report, we have a warning, we have to replace the battery, which is probably leaked. Welcome to the configuration menu. Here you can see it's an FTX 517, even though on my case it's a 507. I don't know why, maybe it was made out of parts or Schneider did some upgrade on this machine. The computer has two operating systems, one is IBM OS2 Warp and the other one is Windows 95. But today I'm not going to get in any operating system details, because I can't wait to take the machine apart. The keyboard cable suffers from rot, if you google cable rot you're gonna find it uh, under compact portable 3 and other portable models. As you see in the BIOS, there is a battery which probably is leaking inside, so we gotta check that out. In the back you have only two screws that you need to take out, and then you just have to lift up the cover. This cover gives you access to the two ISA ports. There's almost no dust here, this computer is equipped with a dust filter like my modern gaming desktop. This thing is solid state, look at the hard drive suspension. Definitely can withstand some shocks, right? Now let's get back to disassembling. This is odd, an EEPROM chip that can be raised by UV light has no sticker. I'm gonna place one just to be sure. I just love these overdrives, they look so fancy. In my opinion these are the best looking CPUs ever. This system is equipped with 16 MB of memory, as you can see these are Edo chips put on some kind of proprietary slot. The good news is this battery hasn't leaked, so what I'm going to do I'm just going to remove it because I don't want to replace it right now. 
you can still get replacement for these batteries on eBay. You can even get a good deal for them. There isn't much dust here, but I'm thinking of cleaning it anyway. The next step is to fix the keyboard cable. I'm going to replace with another keyboard cable even though it's not going to be this coil type one. When peeling off glue you need to use the heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun then you can use the hair dryer. Don't forget to check out the pinouts before you solder the wires. Use isopropyl alcohol to remove the remaining glue. I think this project was an easy one and it went quite well, don't you think? <laughs>